Here's my entry for Eurobricks Contest TC27, which is a model of a truck-mounted forklift. So this is the kind of forklift that I sometimes see driving around, usually on the back of trucks from hardware stores, delivering, so the truck's like delivering lumber or something to the job site, and they've just got this forklift that can ride along on the back of the truck, and then it's right there to unload when they get there. So these particular forklifts have some interesting features, which is why I was interested to build it for this contest. So. Just for general aesthetic, I can show you the basic look here. It's got a license plate. These are about the only forklifts I ever see in Canada with license plates because they're on the back of the truck, so they get to have the truck's license plate on it because you couldn't see it otherwise. So if this forklift were currently loaded onto the truck and was getting ready to be unloaded, the first job would be to raise the forks. So to do that, we can use this knob down here. So, so the lifting mechanism here is using two of these um, racks and frames, and then it's got the chain for a two-stage mechanism. Probably try to speed this up later. It would have been nice to make this an electric model, because it would be a lot nicer than turning these knobs, but I didn't really think I had room to put in as many motors as I would need. And because of some of the other functions that are going on, there's less room than... I don't know. Well, sorry. Because of other things, it would be pretty much impossible to get drive going on the model, and a motorized model without motorized drive seems a little weird. So I figured I'd just keep the whole thing manual. Alright, so there it is at full height. Actually, I kind of think of it, I might have the unloading procedure wrong. I don't, don't quite remember if that's the first step or not. But anyways, the other step you'd want to do early on is running this crank here to move the entire mast forwards. Again, using two of those racks and frames with worm gears. So there it is in a more unfolded mode. And this was the knob. No, this was the knob I was using here. So now is probably a good time to talk about the different steering modes. You've probably noticed that these wheels are looking kind of funny here. That's just the way that I have to have them for storage. Um, most of the time, they would be folded out like this, allowing us to drive it pretty normally with this manually steered wheel at the back. But the other mode is not just there for storage, it's mainly there because the real life one has a feature where you can rotate those wheels sideways, rotate the rear wheel sideways, then the entire forklift can drive parallel to the truck it's unloading, allowing it to unload in a very small space. Like there could be a wall back there and the truck right here. They can just drive back and forth. So that one's using a bit of a gear rack in there that pulls a module forward and back to steer the wheels in and out. Then the rear you just have to do whatever you need to do to make it work. So the next rather unique function of these forklifts is the scissor extend mechanism for the forks. So by rotating another knob on the back, it's actually pulling a little bit of string on a winch. Well, not really a winch. Kind of a winch. This is operated by string <laughs> that rotates. Alright, so there we have our fork extended. So the thinking with this, I believe, is that you can then reach out basically to the other side of a truck you're unloading 
So you can unload the stuff here with your fork in the normal position. Then you can extend it out and get the stuff from the other side of the truck without actually moving your forklift around to the other side. So that's it there. Um, it's got one of the more complicated drivetrains. It's kind of similar to other ones on the vehicle. So we start off with this here, which then drives this red HT skier, which is one of the ones that allows axles to slide on it. So when the whole thing, when the whole mass slides in, that axle can slide through there. Then it comes to here, runs this bevel gear, then runs this bevel gear, then it runs this 32 long axle that runs all the way up the mast, which has a sliding worm gear on it, which runs the 24 tooth gear, which runs an 8 tooth gear, which runs this little coil with the string on it. So I'm just gonna quick wind it back in. Maybe quick, sometimes it takes a bit. So the way the string is working, we've got two things coming off of that. So we've got one string here, one string here. So right now it's pulling it back in here. Then when it comes the other way, it's pulling down. Oops, I'm going the wrong way now. Let's fix that. My U-joint just came undone <laughs> down there. But it's basically all the way back in now. So that's how it works. So the last function that we have is just tilting the whole mast using this small linear actuator here. So that's also controlled by a knob on the back, right around there. So... further than you'd ever want to have it out. Actually, you thought there was some kind of stop in here. Anyways, <laughs> if you really, really want to dump your cargo, you can go that far forward, but you probably don't want to. So anyways, that's the functions of this model. It's got the, can slide the mast forward, can slide the forks out on the scissor linkage, can raise the mast pretty high, can tilt the mast, then it's got that sideways steering mode, which I think is one of the most fun functions than the normal steering. So yeah, that's this model. Um, I think it looks pretty decent. I'm, I think I'm improving on these things. It's not amazing, but it's got some detail and, I don't know, looks like there's some effort involved. Um, the functions are honestly working pretty good. The scissor extend out here has a bit of backlash in it with the way the string is, so you have to turn it a few rotations before you get movement. And lowering the fork, sometimes it tends to get caught on stuff because it's only based on gravity with the chain, so you can just lift up the fork. Um, that's actually would be really a problem if I was trying to do this on a truck, because it has to be able to lift itself onto the truck, which is just not possible. It can lift loads, but it can't pull itself up with this chain pulley design for the two-stage. I'm not really sure what else I could have done to get the two-stage with it not having that effect, and I wasn't planning on building a truck, so it's not a real drawback. The issue is that sometimes it gets stuck on the mast here. Not too bad, but you have to kind of wiggle it a little to get it to go down. But overall, I'm pretty pleased with it. I've been considering building one of these for a while. Wasn't really sure how I would do it, but I think doing the small scale with manual functions is probably a pretty reasonable way to go. It ended up being challenging just because like everything is moving relative to everything else. So I had to have four different shafts. There's the one there, and then three on that side, all running through those sliding 8-2 skiers to control all the functions from the back while a lot of them were taking place out there. And then that's not even including joints and stuff, and then sliding up, up the mast. So a bit of complicated function routing, but I think the Result turned out pretty well.